Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloat channel. I think we all know the Diatone R349 is a fast quad and I fly it enough to know it is, but just how fast? I wanted to find out for myself. Stay tuned for test footage and the results. Now obviously you could use a speed gun to measure quad speed but I've had this Ublox M8 GPS module sitting on the shelf for some long forgotten pixel project so I've decided to wire that into the R349 and configure Betaflight to use it. And these are commonly used for the Betaflight rescue mode, a bit like return to home but they also show the speed in kilometres or miles per hour. Getting this wired in is pretty easy because the R349 has a convenient spare UART, UART 6 that we can use. And if we look at the manual of the Mamba R405, so here we've got the flight controller, we've got these connections down here which are VCC and ground which is where the battery is connected and then running along here we've got RX6, TX6 and those are the IO pins for UART6 and then next to it we've got plus 5 and ground and those are going to power our GPS module if you haven't got this manual I'll leave a link to it in the description below the wiring and colours of the connections on your GPS module may be different if you're using a different one but if they're based on a Ublox M8 you just need to connect four wires which is pretty much 5 volts in this case 3.3 to 5 volts ground TX and RX and the way these need to be wired up is so that the GPS TX or transmit goes to the receive or RX on the UART and the GPS RX or receive connects to the UART TX or transmit but just make sure that you check the GPS manual carefully and these connections here are buried under the canopy just down there so I'll need to get this removed taking this top cover off is pretty easy there's four long bolts which attach from underneath and I recommend putting a piece of tape under here so that you don't actually have to worry about any of these standoffs falling out and worrying about what order they're going to go back in and then on the top of each of these standoffs there's a washer which we'll put back on in a minute but here we go if we compare this to what we've got here it's a little bit tight but we have got there we've got RX6 TX6 5 volts and ground and we're just going to wire in this cable onto that. There we go there's a capacitor between 5 volts and ground on the Mamba 405 flight controller board and I've connected the power and the ground to those two watt pins on there and then we've got the RX and the TX. Remember to double check your wiring and as is usual when you're doing any soldering and you've finished it's always a good idea to use your multimeter and just do a continuity check to make sure that you haven't got any shorts between power and any of the solder connections that you've made. So that's it, I'll get the canopy pack on and the GPS fixed in place on the top. And one thing to remember when you are screwing the bolts back in, this is a soft mount stack so don't go screwing them in all the way and really tight because you'll squish down these silicon mounts. These are screwing into plastic so they're not going to come undone very easily. You don't need thread lock or anything. So there we go. We've got the canopy back on. I've fixed the GPS to the top of the canopy with some double sided foam tape and just added a couple of tie wraps on there to hold it securely. I don't plan on this being a permanent fixture on here. It's just to measure how fast it actually flies. In fact, I'll probably be using this on all the quads, which are fairly quick when I review them in the future, as long as they've got a spare UART that I can use. And the cables are tidily tucked away under here. So that all that's done, all I need to do is make a few tweaks to the settings in Betaflight so that it knows how to use this. 
Getting this configured in beta flight is pretty straightforward. You will need a battery or an external power supply. Otherwise the GPS unit won't fire up. Get this plugged into the computer. Okay, let's connect. And what we need to do is go to the ports tab. And if you remember, we wired up TX and RX6, which is UART6. So we actually need to tell it that that is GPS, which is great. Hit save and reboot. Perfect. Let's reconnect. And go to ports, check that it's still set. That's good, saved correctly. Make sure that you've got enable expert mode turned on up here, otherwise some of these options won't appear. So if you go into configuration, scroll down and you need to turn on GPS. And the options here, I'm using a U-Blocks, so we select U-Blocks, there's the NMEA option as well, which is just a different type of GPS sensor. I've just left all these as default and it works perfectly. So it's save and reboot. And let's connect. Excellent. So you'll notice now the GPS sensor in the toolbar at the top has just appeared. So we know we've wired it up correctly and it's working. So if we go to the GPS tab, which will now be enabled. And you can see here that we have got however many satellites, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six, seven, eight at the moment. It's got a fix, and this is a map of where we are at the moment, which is perfect. And if we go to the OSD, we have a couple more options. We want to show, I think, just GPS speed and GPS satellites. There is all that also lat and long but I'm not interested in that. And I have set the units to Imperial so the speed down here is in M which is miles an hour. If I change to metric then it will change to K but I'm going to leave it in Imperial. And the number of satellites I pushed up to the top left there. When you've done this don't forget to hit save. And that is all good. That's all we have to do. So I think what we'll do now is go out and try this in the car just to see how accurate this speed reading is. And then I'm going to go out in the field and do some speed tests. Now that's not a particularly accurate test, but I wanted to check the GPS speed was, you know, about right. Although the car speedo is probably way out as well, but it does tell me that the GPS speed is in the right ballpark. And here we are going along, doing about 55, coming up to 60. Yeah, so it's about right. So here we go, and this is interesting. I tried a few runs in both directions to see if the wind made any difference, and it pretty much felt the same both ways. Maybe it's just because it's such a small quad. Anyway, the speed peaks are just over 90 miles an hour but it's hard to really tell because the GPS speed display is having a hard time keeping up. Maybe it's just the GPS M8 module and beta flight not sampling fast enough. After all, this is really designed for rescue mode, so a fast sampling rate probably isn't needed. It really needs an accurate GPS logging system, but I'm not planning on that anytime soon. I was just curious to see how fast this was not running a lab accurate test. But it does show that the R349 is good for 90 miles per hour, which is fantastic. If you plan on doing this yourself, I discovered a couple of things that might be helpful. The GPS doesn't work that well when there's only a few satellites and you're trying to fly fast. I tried a couple of my favorite spots and it was getting dropout and really wacky results and you'll only get a few satellites if it's overcast. 
I found this spot gave me 10 to 13 satellites, but it took about five minutes to get a fix. To check, I just connected Betaflight to the quad and watched the satellite count and the signal strength, and it does show you when it's actually got a fix. Thanks for watching, and if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first visit, then please subscribe to the channel for updates. I'll see you next time.